The following presentation is rated Web 14. Viewer discretion is advised. Previously on Welcome to the Family. I've been stranded without knowing that this could help me. A lot of people will like, well, I need to get somewhere quick. Hmm? Well, that right there, you shouldn't be riding a bike. After doing the various exercises, when the instructors felt comfortable, then we actually did the road test. It requires 80% accuracy. Anyone can entertain you, but only we entertain you. With a mixture of fun, learning, and craziness, my team and I travel the world motivating and connecting with people. Are you ready? Welcome to the family. Today we're visiting a very important luncheon which the State Attorney Catherine fernandez Rundle is going to be visiting and speaking about the effects of human trafficking on Miami-Dade County. We want to shed light to this to this cause and help her promote what you know the changes we can make in our own community even if it's just a small event at least it can get a bigger bigger sighting on it. The reason we went to OIT is because it's an organization that deals with women who do business internationally and of course <laughs> all types of chapters we use Geneva, Egypt, Mexico so just seeing all these women in different uh, trades just empowers us, you know, 30, 40 year olds and how to be leaders in our community. We were on the border of Guatemala one time and there was a big billboard and it said stop human trafficking, you know, or, you know, aware, you know, that it's illegal to traffic humans and I was like, oh, look what they're doing here in Guatemala, oh my god. Right. And then I turned on the television in Belize and there's commercials for human trafficking, I'm like, man, these people really have a problem. Right. How stupid of me, right? <laughs> oh my god, this happens here? My kid's in danger? Oh no, I gotta do something. Yeah. So anything that we can get involved with, that we can put out to the public to let them know about human trafficking, we're there. We just finished the PSA for the Broward Coalition on Human Trafficking that airs on CBS and Comcast of the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so, and we're, as soon as we get back in Belize, we're doing another PSA, but that one, that one was targeted, targeted towards parents. We're targeting towards youth. Great. Our very own state attorney, Miami-Dade County, Catherine Fernandez Rundle here to talk about, to us about human trafficking and the effect it's had on our community. Welcome. We don't want to be known as, oh, the second or third and the largest in the country in the number of human of victims of human trafficking. That's absurd. So if you can't sell it on a, this is the right thing, real thing to do, these are truly are victims. And we need to wrap our arms around them and help them. I wanted to meet the state attorney, and I know that she's heavily involved in human trafficking. So I wanted to see how we can get involved for motivational missionaries. These girls are not other people's children. They're in our schools, they're in our foster care system, they're in our neighborhoods, they're on the streets, they're in our parks, they're everywhere. That's the other thing, we keep looking at her to do something. She's helpless, she's the victim. She's the one that's been brought into this brutality and this torture. It's up to us to do something about it. I think that's what we're trying to do as a community. We've all been rallying together, and I applaud you for really reaching out to the youth because the next generation is so critical to this to this fight, this war that we have on our hands. It was really nice for Catherine Rundle Fernandez to take a moment out of her busy schedule to interview with us and give us a little bit of insight into what's going on. And hopefully she can help us launch our program within Miami-Dade County Public Schools on human trafficking. So I was uh, waiting for my client and I had just confirmed my client that was coming over and I get a phone call from one of Dylan's friends and he says, hi, is this Miss Oliva? I'm like, yes, this is, this is Dylan's friend. He just fell down and he split his leg. He's bleeding everywhere and I think he needs to go to the hospital. And I'm like, what? Let me go get him. I guess my client can wait while I go assess the situation. Was he skating? I don't know, he fell down. All right, no blood on the ground, that's good. No, he doesn't feel it. He don't feel it now. Yeah, he was laughing. He was like, oh my Where's God. your shirt, buddy? Yeah. How'd you do it? You, you just tripped and busted yeah, open? Oh, yeah. rock. Alright. Yeah, his knee was split, and Bert calls me. He's like, Is he okay? And I'm like, Yeah, I think I gotta take him to the hospital. Under. Damn, you gashed it open. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hold this right here. Hello. Hello. Uh, I can't move it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, he needs to go to the hospital. Oh. Ah. Uh, 
Hi, Jen. Uh, Thank you for calling me. Yes, you're very welcome. Jen, call me, text me, dude. Make sure that you're good. I love you. Did you just tell Dylan he loves you? Yeah. He's not the cutest thing you ever said. I love you. Aww. So, Val, we'll coming. leave him there, and Valerie's gonna take him to the hospital. My meeting's on her way to the house. Oh, okay. I didn't feel it. You will. <laughs> Don't feel it. That you will feel. Or it's like we can butterfly stitch it at home. Like, uh, this ain't no butterfly stitch situation. No. <laughs> Yo, that's no cut. That's no scab. That's a gash. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> I got a scar. No, you're gonna scar. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. You remember this fall for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. Making me feel better for this summer. Happy summer. <laughs> you're funny. Off-road basketball? No, this should be rocks on the, on the floor. Whoa! Oh my god, it's gonna have to come down from the knee down. Come on. <laughs> That's pretty bloody, dude. It's really bloody. Oh. I'm really glad you, you had that wrapped around you. Granted, FYI, this is the absorbent side. Not that side. This is the absorbent side? Yeah. They wrapped the wrong way. See, look. This side down. Somebody didn't That's read. It's gonna be funny. It's going in. Why are you watching? No, don't shake like that. I don't want it deeper. And the worst part, after this, you won't feel a thing. What don't is that? What is that? This is lidocaine. This is to numb it. Okay. The next few are gonna be just to make sure you don't feel it. <laughs> Whoa, that does not look good. Aren't you glad you can't feel it? You don't have something to like cover my eyes because I'm gonna look at it. I could put a few stitches on your eyelids and then. No thanks, don't want that needle here. There goes my shakes again. So we went to the Children's Coalition and I thought that maybe we could develop a good partnership with them. So right now we're at the Child Rescue Coalition. And basically they're going to be bringing a bunch of speakers today. One in seven boys will be sexually abused before the age 18. And even worse than that, one in four girls will be sexually abused before the age of 18. These are horrible facts of how many children are being abused annually. Over 300,000 children just in the U.S. I'm going to start this map here as I speak, and you're immediately going to start seeing dots populate the map, okay? They have software that helps track predators. These are computers that are online right this minute, right this second, that are participating in this child pornography cloud that I described a moment ago. Because it went from the guys who roam the streets and surf behind buses to grab children to the internet, which became the private hunting ground for pedophiles all over the world. In three weeks, we're able to arrest 77 pedophiles. They recovered five children alive under the age of 12 that were being actively molested and involved in child pornography. Police have been able to make over 4,000 arrests and I thought, you know, this is something that we should align with motivational missionaries considering that we're both helping children. If you're involved in this activity, I am going to hunt you down, I am going to put you in jail, and I'm gonna make sure that you don't abuse these kids anymore. So that's the message. It is an ugly, ugly little secret that Americans don't want to admit that we engage in. We don't want to admit that it's a problem. We know it's interesting. Our kids are brought up to learn uh, don't drink and drive, yes. don't do drugs. There's got to be another mantra coming from our parents and our schools. Think before you post. I had no idea that the predators are actually breaking into the apps and stealing the pictures and videos and stuff from the kids before they're even deleted. For example, in Snapchat, all the kids think the picture disappears instantly. It doesn't because by pushing two buttons on your phone, you can capture it, put it in your phone, or repost it anywhere you want. And unfortunately, we all have a friend that doesn't respect privacy very well somewhere in our lives. 
they take that picture, they repost it onto Twitter, onto Facebook, onto Instagram. What I think children need to realize now and parents need to focus on is to stay away from anybody on the internet that you really do not know. If people around the country and really around the world understood the, the gravity, the scope of this problem, I think we would see a groundswell. If you think that it can't happen to your child in America, it can happen to your child. In America, the richest, most powerful country on this planet is the number one offender of sex trafficking of children and human trafficking of adults. Hi, I'm Val, and welcome to the family. Make sure to like, comment, and share. And subscribe, of course.